Hey, hello there. This is Darcy, garden designer and creator of eGarden Go. So today I'm just going to uh, take you through a slideshow of camellias. And um, I am out and about in the nurseries quite a bit, and I always take a... a take the opportunity to update my photo files and so I have lots of photos of different camellias that are regularly available in the Portland market so that's what this is you're going to see the varieties come across the, str the screen and its uh, botanical name uh, is down below so that you can kind of see what you're looking at I'm starting with the autumn uh, camellias, the Camellia sasanquas and so the first part of this uh, slideshow is going to focus on those um, and they are, um, they're the ones that you're going to see blooming oh, as early as like, say, November or so in Portland. And then they continue into December and oftentimes into January and maybe even have a, a second push as the weather starts warming a little bit. Um, they are a personal favorite of mine for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that the, they have some... Um, little smaller uh, plants like the uh, the one that we're going to see here momentarily is uh, Camellia chansonette and it and a couple of others are different in the sense that you know most camellias are pretty upright pretty tall uh, but chansonette is actually wider than it is tall and so that's kind of a, a helpful and um, uh, useful shape whereas most of the plants are more upright so it's kind of good to know that here you can see its overall growth habit the other and probably the mo mo more important factor uh, or reason that I like the succinct was best is that they are just they're just not as messy you know you may think that you don't like camellias because in your mind's eye you're thinking of all the Camellia japonicas, which are big double blooms that can be really messy when the flowers drop. What you're seeing here are the sasanquas, and they have a tendency to be much more delicate, and their blossoms are not nearly as heavy, and so consequently not nearly as messy when they uh, fall off the plant. So they clean themselves much, uh, much better. Um, they're also flexible in terms of how you can grow them. A lot of times, and this is really uh, helpful in small gardens, um, like I grow mine trained against uh, a fence. This one here is trained against a fence. You just saw it trained against a wall. And even in my garden, I have one uh, trained against a wire mesh. So I like the fact that they are pretty pliable and they can uh, be uh, trained in that way. These slides, you're gonna see uh, the uh, the variety called Pinkaboo, uh, that's really out on the market uh, now. Just tons of, uh, it's just widely available. All right, now we're getting into the Japonicas. So this Japonica is one of, well, frankly, it's the only Japonica I'm growing in my garden. And I do have it also trained on that wire mesh. So I'm growing it kind of with a real slim profile. And I like the plant. But I have to tell you, those flowers are, I, I only need one <laughs> because the camellia flowers, they are beautiful. They certainly are. But those big double blooms that, that look so gorgeous here on the screen, um, also it's a bit of a double-edged sword. They can be really messy when they fall off the plant. Um, so the trick, I think, of, of growing and enjoying the Camellia japonicas is all about uh, location, location, location. So put them in a place where those falling blooms, those big gloppy uh, uh, blops of flowers that are going to fall in, um, in spring, um, put them where they're not going to be such a bother. So don't plant this uh, so that its blossoms are going to fall on a patio or a walkway that you use and uh, frequently and rely on, rely on using in you know, March and April. Um, and then you're gonna really be uh, solving kind of one of the bi biggest obstacles to enjoying this plant and that's the mess. So placement is everything in terms of being able to enjoy the japonicas. So, and they're not all incredibly double. You can see that some of these that are coming up across the screen right now are more single. Um, and so that's, uh, that's good. 
but they come in a variety of colors. We just saw the reds and the corals, but some of them are just really uh, much more delicate and beautiful. Um, I think this one is incredibly uh, wonderful. That's Nukio's Pearl. Here's a big fat double pink. And, and another really, uh, really double flower. Some beautiful whites that are just uh, delicate and pretty. Camellias are evergreen shrubs. Uh, they are uh, tough and sturdy and easy to grow. And in Northwest gardens, um, they can be quite drought tolerant. So that's definitely in the plus column as well. So they don't require uh, much in terms of supplemental water once you get them established. And because they're evergreen and they can, they can create a uh, very uh, useful uh, screen or boundary they can be used for hedging. They can be used to divide space, uh, create privacy. And those are that's the japonicas that we just went through. And now we're just going to end this video with a few of the... Uh, they're neither sasanquas nor japonicas. Um, they are just some different varieties that I thought were really uh, pretty and I wanted to share with you. So pink icicle looks a lot like a ja uh, japonica but its flowers are kind of delicate and uh, more single and simple. And so it's gonna be a little tidier in terms of growing. And you can see, I kind of like that when I have a number of photos of it. Really rich, deep, dark uh, uh, green foliage. This is Camellia buttermint, also widely available in the Portland area. Um, it's a relatively compact plant, as you'll see. I have a photo of its uh, overall form coming up here. But it's a white, it's a double or semi-double, very uh, generous in bloom and um, easy, easy to grow, tough little plant, and would be excellent for like hedging. Uh, because it's not very tall. You'll see that here shortly. There it is in its overall form. So that one has been um, maybe pruned a little bit to be so compact, but generally it was about three feet tall or so. This is a real pretty uh, cross or a hybrid cross. And another, these are more delicate, maybe a little closer to some of the, the uh, species. This one is unique and I couldn't not include it. It's called Alina Cascade, and look at that foliage, and then its overall growth habit is really unique. So I hope this video has given you some ideas of some uh, camellias that you might want to uh, add to your garden. And if you like this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. This is Darcy Daniels from eGarden Go.